Good evening, everybody. My name is Travis. I am here to talk to you today about um, 2020 election. Uh, the purpose of this workshop is going to be to provide you with information regarding the upcoming election. I like to cover the five W's and the one H of voting. Uh, so first, um, what are we talking about? We're talking about voting in the 2020 election. Election day is November 3rd. 2020, and it is imperative that we all get out and cast our votes. Um, your vote is important. This um, election will include local, state, and federal elections. And um, I think we all know that this is one of the most important and influential elections in our history. Um, so I'll be providing you with, again, with information and uh, links for you to follow with um, some things that might come in handy for you um, in hopes that you'll be well prepared uh, for this election. So um, who can vote? Um, you have to register to vote before election day in North Carolina. To register to vote, you must be a citizen of the United States. You must have lived at the registered address for at least 30 days immediately before the next election in which you want to vote. You have to be 18 years of age by the day of the general election. Uh, uh, as a felon, a felon can vote, um, but a felon must have their rights of citizenship restored and they have to have completed their felony sentence. They cannot be on papers. Um, no probation, no parole, no post-release supervision, um, none of those things, no fines, restitution, everything has to be done and completed if you are a felon and are interested in voting. Um, if you have lived in North Carolina for 30 days, you can register uh, during the early voting period, and we'll talk about early voting in a moment, but um, the deadline to register is October 9th. Um, again, you can same day register if you go um, if you've lived in North Carolina for at least 30 days, and you have not registered to vote when you, if you go vote early, you can register at that time. Um, so when is voting? Again, election day is November 3rd, 2020. Early voting starts October 15th and goes on through October 31st. Um, you can vote any of those times um, during early voting, here is some information about voting early. Um, early voting sites in Chatham County. Uh, here are the uh, voting sites for the actual November 3rd election. Here are the days and the dates um, of early voting. See October 15th through October 31st. There are two Sundays, October 18th and October 25th. Um, during early voting, a person can vote at any of these sites. Um, I will provide the link in the chat box to this document. Or I'm sorry, to this web page. Mm -hmm. Sorry, give me one second here. Copy, paste in the chat box. Okay, that is the link to early voting information, early voting sites, the days, the dates, and the times. Um, next, um, absentee balloting. This is a hot topic right now. Absentee balloting has been around for a while. It is not anything new. Um, it is, um, it has become more popular for this election due to um, COVID-19. 
and the fact that um, people may not want to cast their votes in person this year. Um, absentee voting is voting by mail. In order to vote absentee, you must first request an absentee ballot form. Um, I think a month ago or so, a lot of people received a package in the mail from um, an organization that sent out absentee ballot request forms. This was not the actual absentee ballot. In order to receive an absentee ballot, you did have to complete that form, submit it to um, your local Board of Elections here. That would be Chatham County in Pittsburgh, Chatham County Board of Elections in Pittsburgh. And they will then send you the actual absentee ballot. And the absentee ballot um, needs to be completed and returned. And we'll talk a little bit more about that in just a second. Um, but we're just talking about the wins right now. So absentee ballots are accepted up until the day of the election. Um, and and I, I think I would have to double check. I'm sorry, I don't know this uh, information to be factual, but I think there is a, a grace period um, after election day, the absentee ballots will be accepted as long as it was postmarked prior to November 3rd. But follow up behind me on that one. Early voting again starts October 15th and runs through October 31st. And election day is on November 3rd, 2020. So there are um, different times uh, for when a person can vote. Um, where to vote. Again, if you vote absentee, you vote by mail, or you can take your absentee ballot, your completed absentee ballot, and drop it off at your local board of elections or to any early voting site uh, during the election or on election day. Um, again, I showed um, the early voting sites, the days, the dates, and the times. I posted the link to that website in the chat box. Um, if you are interested in knowing where your polling location is for November 3rd, uh, because on November 3rd, if you go vote in person on November 3rd, you have to vote in your precinct at your precinct polling sites. Um, here is the link. I'm also going to post this in the chat box. Paste, find your polling location for November 3rd. I will show you what that page looks like right now. I'm gonna click on this link and I will share my screen so that you can see. This is what the web, uh oh, this is what the website looks like. The web page to check your polling site. Enter your address here, it will then bring up where your site is used on Chatham Literacy's address, for example. To know two West Third Street in Sawyer City, it gives us the place on the map and then tells us where um, the person who would live at that address would go vote right here. So this is useful information. Uh, so that's where to vote. Those are the early voting sites. Remember, during early voting period between October 15th and October 31st, a person who's registered to vote can vote at any of those sites throughout the county. You do not have to vote in your precinct during early voting. If you wait to vote in person on November 3rd, you do have to vote in your polling precinct. How do you vote? There are um, a couple different ways to vote. I'm going to cover three main ways today. Absentee balloting. Um, again, an absentee ballot or a mail-in ballot uh, has become very popular now due to COVID. Um, the process is that a person requests an absentee ballot form. Oh, I'm sorry. First, you have to complete this document. Let me share this with you. This is the absentee ballot request form for North Carolina. So um, you would print this or uh, fill out one that's, that you already have sent to you. Uh, completed 
fill out all the information here and you can mail it back in or you can drop it off at the state, I'm sorry, at the um, Board of Elections office. Um, I will share this link in the chat box also. Give me just a second here. Absentee ballot request form. So to vote absentee, you would request a ballot first. After you request a ballot, they will send you a ballot through the mail. Um, if you're planning on voting absentee, fill that ballot out. And there are um, a few things of note that I would like to mention at this point during the process. Um, I think that if you're gonna vote absentee ballot, if you have not mailed in your absentee ballot request, that you, we now need to start thinking about turning them in in person. I know that might be scary for a lot of people, but the, this election is important. Every vote counts and it's important that we get every vote counted. Um, so uh, I would encourage you if you're planning on voting by mail or if or if you don't or if you anticipate there being lines at the polls fill out your absentee ballot and take it to the poll and drop it off you can't vote twice you can't fill out the absentee ballot turn it in and then go vote in person but you can fill out the absentee ballot turn it in and that will be counted as your vote um when you return your absentee ballot let me um, show you this document here also. This is the return um, envelope for the ballot. You, the voter, need to make sure that you sign where it says right here, voter sign here. You need to have a witness also to sign. So for absentee balloting, there are two people required, the actual voter, and a witness to that vote. Um, so please make sure that you, the voter, signs it and that you also have a witness sign it. Um, <clears throat> again, you know, all of this is outlined up here. Here are the people who can be your witness uh, or who can't be your witness. Um, I know they, I, I just was on a call last night and they are strongly encouraging your witness to be an immediate family member, somebody that lives in your household if possible. So just keep that in mind. Um, I, I will post the link to that document also in the chat box. Okay. Um, again, so return your absentee ballot to the Board of Elections. You can turn it in. Uh, in person during early voting or on election day, or you could also mail it. At this point, again, I, you know, there's likely to be a flood of absentee ballots coming in through the mail. So to uh, minimize any chance of your vote not getting counted, um, take it and hand it in in person. Neat little tool right here. A lot of people um, I've heard are concerned about how to make sure that their absentee ballots got counted. Um, so here's a nifty little tool, just put it in the chat box. It's called uh, Ballot Tracks. For those who want to track their ballots, I will show this to you also. Share your screen. Um, track the status of your mail-in ballot from printed to accepted. First name. Let's type in my name just to see what happens. I haven't done this yet. Um, and I guess you all are going to see my birthday. That's okay, though. Not a shame. Live in Solar City. I'm not a robot. Bicycles. Log in. Um, so here you can see that my ballot has been mailed. I have received my ballot. Uh, this was 926, it was mailed out. Um, so this tells you everything you need to know about your ballot. I have not mailed back mine back in. I actually plan on going to vote in person. Um, 
but I did want to make sure that I requested an absentee ballot and have my absentee ballot in case something changes um, and I change my mind. Um, so that's that. And let me just say that um, I know I'm giving a lot of information. If you have any questions at any, at any time, you can contact me um, from the email address here in the chat box. That is my personal email address. Um, the second way to vote is early in person. Early voting, again, starts on October 15th and lasts through October 31st. Um, the link to uh, early voting information that includes where to vote, the days, the hours, the sites, all those things um, is the first link in the chat box. Um, the third option for voting is voting on election day. That's November 3rd, vote in person or take your absentee ballot, find a poll worker and hand them your absentee ballot on any of those days during early in-person or election day. Um, so I wanted to show a couple of sample ballots. First, I wanna say that this is a nonpartisan effort, a nonpartisan workshop. So um, congressional districts are, uh, I'm gonna show you ballots based on congressional districts. Here are the, oh, I'm sorry, let me share my screen. Here are the um, congressional districts for Chatham County. District four uh, are all these precincts. These are, these are precincts um, or, or divisions of the county based on location. Um, if you are in Pittsburgh, you're most likely to be in district four. If you're Solar City, you're most likely, well, depending on what part of Solar City, West Solar City is in district 13. Uh, East Solar City is split between District 4 and District 13, so there may be some confusion there. Um, but if you have any questions, you can ask me, you can ask the poll workers, they will be able to guide you during this process. Um, so do not fret, do not worry. I'm also putting this information over in the chat box for you. 2020 Congressional Districts. Okay, uh, so here are the actual um, here are the actual ballots. Again, remember, so to keep it simple, District Four is going to be Pittsburgh. District Thirteen is going to be, in most cases, the Solar City area. Um, but District Four. So if you're in the Pittsburgh area, this is what your ballot will look like. I'll also post the link to the sample ballots as well. Um, so you can see all the um, positions that are up for election, North Carolina governor. Um, these are federal, state, and local elections, both Democrat and Republican, and any other parties that may be on here. Again, this is a nonpartisan workshop, so uh, we do not endorse uh, any candidates here. Uh, U.S. Senate, Attorney General, NC Auditor, Supreme Court, Just Chief Justice, Chief Justice Seat One, Supreme Court Associate Justice Seat Two. Um, you can see all, all of the, um, all of the people that are running for uh, office right now. This is. Congressional District 4. I am now, um, let me post that link in the chat box for you. Copy, paste. District 13 is gonna be Solar City area mostly. Let me post that also in the chat box for you. And then I will click on the link. Um, you can see the same, oh, sorry, share screen. They look almost identical, um, but there, it, there is uh, a difference or two on here. 
see if I can point them out to you while I'm going there. You can see Secretary of State, Energy Treasurer, Supreme Court, U.S. House of Representatives, District 13. That's the difference. The District of the U.S. House of Representatives. Um, so, again, um, this is what you need to know. This is what you're going to be looking at when you go vote. Um, be sure that you, um, have, if you have any questions, you know, do research on the candidates, find out. There's a voter's guide out there with information about all the candidates in there. Um, it's a good tool to have. I have several of them. If you would like any, please email me. I'm happy to figure out how to get them out to you. Um, and um, one other thing I'd like to share is just if you are unsure about your voter registration status, um, here there is a way to find out. Um, if you go to the State Board of Elections website, which is here, I'll just put that link in the chat box. Um, that will help you determine um, what your what your voter current voter registration status is. So if you're unsure for any reason, if you moved, if you just don't remember registering, if you don't know, um, go to that website and check it out into your information they'll tell you if you're registered where you're registered um, and all that good information um, one last thing i'd like to mention is that id is not required for this election but if this is your first time voting in north carolina or um, if you are a newly registered voter i would encourage you to take it just in case um, that is not required but i do i do want to be clear I'd rather have it and not need it than need it and not have it. Um, again, my name is Travis Patterson. I um, am doing this workshop to help inform our community members about uh, the election 2020, uh, useful information, anything that you might need to know that I could think of that would be helpful for you in preparing for this election. Hope you all um, do plan on voting. Um, I hope this helps you become more prepared and uh, I want to let you know that if you have any questions we're here for you. Um, I did put my information in the chat box. My email travisrpatterson at gmail.com is the best contact way for me. Um, I wish you all well. Hope you have a great day and um, go out and vote. Thank you.